The very end of love, according to Wikipedia. <laughs> so Wikipedia it has very good definition of love, better than any human I've ever ran into. Wikipedia's got a better definition of what love is. Uh, they go through all the religious reasons, philosophical reasons, psychological, evolutionary, spiritual theories. Um, and they even admit very at the very end that philosophical views about love is some people can't explain it and that it's a mystical experience. And I get all those things. It's a mystical experience. Mystical. So it's almost a transcendent feeling. Bordering on, bordering on heroism, right? There's platonic love. Love is a chaste and strong type of love that's non-sexual. So platonic love in this original sense of the term is examined in Plato's dialogue and symposium, which has as its topic the subject of love, or eros, generally. So sexual love, eros. It explains the possibilities of how the feeling of love began and how it has evolved both sexually and non-sexually, a particular importance in the search of Socrates, or in the speech of Socrates, relating the ideas attributed to the prophetess Diotima, which present love as a means of ascent to contemplation of the divine. For Diotima, and for Plato generally, the most correct use of love of other human beings is to direct one's mind to love of divinity. In short, with genuine Platonic love, the beautiful or lovely other person inspires the mind and the soul and directs one attention to spiritual things. So, uh, platonic, uh, I have a platonic love for this person, means I have a non-sexual, friendly love for them. A chaste, strong love that is non-sexual. It's platonic. Uh, so, some more ideas about love. I explained Emma Goldman in the very beginning. Emma Goldman had this idea about how you give yourself to another, and that's how you love. To love fully and deeply, you have to give yourself entirely, 100% into somebody else. And she even doubts, um, in this story I got here, about she's a strong, independent woman, but she felt like she was completely helpless, and uh, she couldn't resist or control the, the, the feelings for love of another. So, um, even to a strong woman such as Emma Goldman, love can overpower her and make her, you know, into, it creates like this, I guess, religious, mystical experience, this experience that is uh, like no other. Um, like Sophocles says that it makes it uh, uh, life, the pain of life more bearable, and that's, that's what love does. God is love, that's what Christians believe. Is, Muslims believe the same thing. Emma Goldman quotes, direct action is a logical, consistent method of anarchism. Every daring attempt to make a great change in existing conditions, every lofty vision of new possibilities for the human race has been labeled utopian. Um, so women of valor. Okay, so this article, women of valor, Goldman loves sexuality. It's a little short write-up about Emma Goldman. So unlike some of her comrades whose radical politics were matched by an often conventional private lives, um, whose radical politics were matched by often conventional private lives. Goldman believed that individuals should enter into and leave personal relationships with no constraints. A view determined by both her commitment to the principle of absolute freedom and her own disappointing experience of marriage. If I ever love a man again, she said in 1889, I will give myself to him without being bound by the rabbi or the law. And when that love dies, I will leave without permission. So Emma Goldman says, I will love this man I will love this man without religion, without the state, saying that I should love him. And when that love dies, then I will leave without permission from anybody. I don't need to ask my religion. I don't need to ask the state. I will just leave because their love is not there anymore. Goldman applied her ideas about free love consistently to women and men, homosexuals and heterosexuals. Emma Goldman advocated her advocacy of homosexual rights earned her opposition even from some within the anarchist community who believe such an unpopular position would only heighten hostility towards the anarchist movement as usual goldman was ready to defy her own comrades as her political adversaries believing that love and sexuality were crucial to personal and professional fulfillment goldman engaged in numerous passionate affairs throughout her life her first important relationship was with her lifelong comrade 
Alexander Berkman. Her longest and most toward affair was with her manager, Ben Reitman, who aroused a sense of her own sexuality that at times overwhelmed her rational, analytic side. You have opened up the prison gates of my womanhood, she wrote to him. All the passions that was unsatisfied in me for so many years leaped into a wild, reckless storm, boundless as the sea. <laughs> Which is wonderful. So even a strong woman like Emma Goldman, she's writing about her, uh, how her sexuality overwhelmed her rational side. And you've opened up the prison gates of my womanhood. All the passion that was unsatisfied in me for so many years leaped into a wild, reckless storm, boundless as the sea. Goldman cycled, often between the energy, excitement, and ecstasy that accompanied a new affair and the despair and hopelessness she experienced when the relationship failed to live up to her expectations. Despite her commitment to free love, Goldman was unable to overcome desperate feelings of jealousy, and she had trouble reconciling her public image as a strong, independent woman with the insecurity and pain men caused her. The wood would stand aghast, she commented, that I, the strong revolutionist, should have been as helpless as a shipwrecked crew on a foaming ocean. So, love is like a shipwrecked crew on a foaming ocean. Love is when you leap into a wildless, reckless storm, boundless as the sea. So, which sounds amazing. It sounds like an amazing love. Emma Goldman. I like a lot of Emma Goldman's thoughts. More quotes from Emma Goldman. She's an anarchist, right? So every daring attempt to make the great change in existing human conditions, every lofty vision of new possibilities for the human race has been labeled utopian. I want to change the world for a better place so that you must be utopian. No, I just dream of a better place and I think we can always advance. And why shouldn't we? We can always advance ourselves, make ourselves better. Just clean your room. You can always clean your room more. So um, since you can always advance and get better, why not clean your room? Why not keep it clean? You need to maintain. Uh, you know, your room, you need to maintain, you need to always get better. So if your room always needs to get better, then you always need to get better spiritually and as a person and as a, a member amongst the human family. Free love, as if love is anything but free. Man has bought brains, but all the millions in the world have failed to buy love. Heaven must be an awfully dull place if the poor in spirit live there. I'd rather have roses on my table than diamonds on my neck. <laughs> Roses on my table, so to look at beauty, to experience beauty, then diamonds on my neck. Heaven must be an awfully dull place if the poor in spirit live there. <laughs> Idealists are foolish enough to throw caution to the winds. They have advanced mankind and have enriched the world. So idealists are foolish enough to throw caution into the wind. They say, all right, I'm going to make the world a better place. Like when I look at Eugene Dez when he's making his speeches... Making us all powerful, we need to change things, we need to do things better, and damn it, you know, we, you the people, I'm pleading with you the people, please listen, I'm speaking for you, I'm speaking to you, for us, I'm not a liberator, there's no such thing as a liberator, I am here to fight on the side of the oppressed, so wise up, make better decisions, get educated, start loving and caring for each other. We need a new world. America, the old system's fucked. The 60s failed. We've been doing this stupid system for way too long. The Britain Woods financial collapse system. The bankers do as the fuck they please system. So let's get away from the bankers do as the fuck they please system. Uh, the bankers don't need to be doing as the fuck they please. I'm not allowed to do as the fuck I please. So how can bankers get away with it? So, <laughs> uh, Emma Goldman... If I can't dance, I don't want to be part of your revolution. The revolution has got to have dancing. That's a part of the revolution, according to Emma Goldman, and I agree. The revolution does need dancing. If love does not know how to give and take without restrictions, then it's not love. Love gives and takes without restrictions. It's not, that's love. A transaction that never fails to lay stress on a plus and a minus. I'm not sure what she means. If voting changed anything, they'd make it illegal. Love that quote. If voting changed anything, they'd make it illegal. In the true sense, one's native land with its background of tradition, early impressions, and reminiscences, and other things dear to one is not enough to make sensitive human beings feel at home. It is essential that we realize once and for all that man is much more of a sex creature than a moral creature. The former is inherent, the other is grafted on. 
Wow. So Amy Goldman is saying that humans are more of a sex creature. That's what we are. We're sex creatures. More than a moral creature. The former is inherent and the other is grafted on. So the sex creature of humans is within that person and the moral creature is imposed and grafted on. So I get that. I get that. I have a moral revolutionary core which I held on to um, and I never let go. But it's something that I believe in. It's a moral compass. It's a set of principles that I stand for. Merely external emancipation has made of the modern woman an artificial being. Now woman is confronted with the necessity of emancipating herself from emancipation if she really desires to be free. Morality and its victim. The mother, what a terrible picture. Is there anything indeed more terrible, more criminal than our glorified sacred function of motherhood? No great idea in the beginning can ever be within the law. How can it be within the law? The law is stationary. The law is fixed. The law is a chariot wheel which binds us all regardless of conditions or time or place. No one has realized the wealth of sympathy, the kindness and generosity hidden in the soul of a child. The effort of every true education should be to unlock that treasure. Emma Goldman. Marriage and Love. I'm going to start reading this article and probably finish up with it next video series. Okay, so Emma Goldman, this is a women's history at godabout.com. Emma Goldman, Marriage and Love, from the 1917 edition of Emma Goldman's Anarchism and Other Essays. So, Emma Goldman, the popular notion about marriage and love is that they are synonymous, that they spring from the same motives and they cover the same human needs. Like most popular notions, this also rests rest not on actual facts, but on superstition. Marriage and love have nothing in common. They are as far as apart as the poles are, in fact, antagonistic to each other. No doubt some marriages have been the result of love. However, because love could assert itself only in marriage, much rather it is because few people can completely outgrow a convention. There are today large numbers of men and women to whom marriage is not but a farce but who submit to it for the sake of public opinion. At any rate, while it is true that some marriages are based on love, and while it is equally true that in some cases love continues in married life, I maintain that it does so regardless of marriage and not because of it. On the other hand, it is utterly false that love results from marriage. On rare occasions, does one hear of a miraculous case of a married couple falling in love after marriage? <laughs> but on close examination, it will be found that it is a mere adjustment to the inevitable. Certainly the growing use to each other is far away from the spontaneity, the intensity, and the beauty of love without which the intimacy of marriage must prove degrading to both the woman and the man. So she's saying marriage and love are the complete opposites. Saying that marriage gives you the safety of always being loved but it's not the same. And sometimes you can get married and fall in love. So I think of like arranged marriages. Arranged marriages have a better chance of surviving than non-arranged marriages. But when you arrange a marriage, you're saying that you agree with the person's family. The, both families agree with the arrangement of the marriage. So since there's so many people that are back in that marriage, um, I think they can fall in love with each other. Now, fall in love versus getting used to one another are two different things. Falling in love... Uh, according to Emma Goldman, and I tend to agree, um, falling in love with somebody has, you know, the um, intensity, the spontaneity, the beauty of love, but the intimacy of marriage is degrading to both man and woman. So love is beautiful, but marriage is almost the opposite of love. Love is spontaneity, it's powerful, it's intense, it's beautiful. But marriage is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's the opposite. It's, you grow intolerant of the other person, you grow used to them, you kind of give up on life. Marriage, I see old married people or married folks, and it just seems like they just give up on life. They aren't going to, you know, try to get with anybody else. It's just them two, and they're just going to make it work. They absolutely despise each other and hate one another. <laughs> My father's parents are just like this. They can't stand each other. They're miserable. But they're stuck together because of life, institutions, financial, because of the state, because there's nobody else. They're old now. So that, that sucks. 
So more about Emma Goldman and uh, marriage versus love coming up. Ha, ha, ha.